much more of a calm and leisurely orbital launch. The second one in the entire universe, and it's already going smooth, very, very smooth. The first one was quite exciting, though. I think I prefer the excitement of uh, that solid rocket booster mayhem. But this is quite impressive, how stable this flight is. And how long the fuel is lasting. Four tanks of liquid fuel. Lasts fairly long, don't underestimate it. Okay, we're 12 minutes, basically 13 minutes into the recording. Congratulations for those of you who are still here. Uh, 20 kilometers up, we're now tilted over 45 degrees, which is roughly about right. We can probably afford to tilt over a bit more, because we are going fairly fast as a result of these engines. Uh, we could do a crew report, but it would probably be a waste. Seeing as you only get one crew report per flight, I think I'll do it on the moon. Uh, if we are going to be able to land, we'll at least be able to get a flyby. That much is fairly certain with the fuel we have. Okay, now tipping a bit further over. And we are about here. Where's our apoapsis? Coming up to 60 kilometers. We'll go for another 70 kilometer apoapsis and then begin our circularization and probably transfer immediately, actually, at that point. 66. Now horizontal. That stage has run out. So we shall decouple and burn very gently. There we go. Alright, bring this up to 70 kilometers. Still no animation of the vectoring. Probably because of the advanced SES, although we don't actually have an advanced SES on board. The actual module itself, that is. But, none the matter. We'll warp. Will we see the moon over the horizon once we reach our apoapsis? Uh, I think I timed it okay. It's just over the horizon now, according to map view. But anyway, we are now 20 seconds. Oh, there's the moon rising. Perfect timing there. Very nice. Just as we hit our apoapsis, the moon rises over the horizon. And it's just about time to begin our circularization burn anyway, if we were to just orbit. So, we start our engines. Tilt upwards a little, because we did actually do it a bit late. I say it's all perfect timing, but no, we actually should have started burning earlier than this. And we are now falling back down towards Kerbin. Don't worry guys, it's fine, this is part of the plan. In fact, let's say, uh, let's observe our mystery goo. The goo seems to have clumped into a sphere, it also appears to have become brittle, with 10 science value, but only 40 if we transmit it, so... or only worth 4 if we transmit it back, so let's not do that. We want as much science as we can to get to that, uh, the science stage. Okay, uh, we're burning immediately, we're burning straight for the moon, we don't need to hang around here. Moon transfer. In progress. I don't like our fuel state. I think we're either going for a, a flyby. No, I don't know. Actually landing seems a bit risky, but we do have... Let's pump this fuel in. We can't do it at the same time, otherwise we'll have an offset balance. So, turn off the engine. Pump this fuel in. I know it would be more efficient to use it in the LV-909 engine, but... In fact, it would be a hell of a lot efficient, more efficient to use it in LV-99. It's a, it has a higher ISP. But, oh well. I like speed. No, not the drug. I just like travelling fast, okay? See, it's looking now that we brought that extra bit of fuel. Although, probably carrying it cost us more fuel than it was worth, but oh well. So, there's the moon encounter. And goodbye, Planet Kerbin! First time in this universe that we've that man or Kerbal kind has reached this far out into the solar system, and its grasp will extend further and further as we now head for the moon. Uh, let's see here. Two hours, one hour, one hour thirty, and we get our encounter. But we're within our sphere of influence now. Okay, time for a abort. No abort. Go, oh, no, isn't it called Go No Go? Go No Go decision. Do we fly past, get in some good scientific data, and return back home immediately, or do we make use of this landing gear that we've spent so much, uh, spent so much precious science to bring and fuel, and actually go for a landing? It's a landing. Yep, we're going to go for a landing. 
burn this in order to bring our periapsis just above, about 5 kilometers high should do it. Oh, there we go, 8 kilometers. Uh, let's transfer... Oh, I shouldn't have done that. Oh dear, hang on, hang on, hang on. Let me let me put our periapsis back into the ground. We want to crash this debris, we don't want to leave it orbiting the solar system. We are, we are good space tourists. We don't litter. Okay, there we go. Now, we have 24, roughly, liquid fuel. Let's try and put 12 in here. See if we can make use of all this fuel. Oh dear. Um, come on, we've got to make this even. So, uh, 11... Uh, oh dear. 12... 12.14. Yeah, that'll be fine. 12.14 will be fine. Okay, let's put the rest in this one. Oh dear. Oh, I burnt. I burnt. Why would I do that? Damn, damn, damn. Rough set now. Okay, forget it. Uh, roughly 24 in, or 24 out of this tank. Or is it 14? Yeah, 14. Doesn't help that it's spinning. Will you stop spinning, please? Thank you. Why didn't I just put the thing on that entire time? I have no idea. Okay, and the rest in. And we should be well enough aligned, I think. Oh, but now we have a periapsis. <laughs> For those of you who have no idea why I'm just sitting here in moon, moon orbit, you probably have the right idea. It's utterly pointless for me to be doing this. 270. Uh, if we decouple this stage, just screw the litter thing, okay? We're going for a moon landing. We don't really care about our litter at the moment. Oh, and the torque on this module. So weak. It's so weak and yet it accelerates quite fast. Now we're burning loads of electrical charge. So let's just decouple this debris there. Giving it a little bit of velocity that way so it ought to have gone crashed. Okay, that's crashed. It hasn't really. It's crashed. It's fine. And now we'll bring down, turning on our engine, of course, we'll bring down our periapsis a little. Because it doesn't need to be this ridiculously high. So, five kilometers. Perfect. Five kilometers up. And we've used barely any of our fuel. Okay, let's time up down. Probably turn the music up a little bit because it is a bit quiet. There we go, very nice. I do like the nice serene music that we get. Okay, so this is go no go stage again. Do we abort? Oh, we have a full tank of fuel and more. I say we go for a landing. I would not be the only one in this respect. So we're going to get us outside, do an EVA report of course, inspect our ship. Man, that looks nice. Hang on, thumbnail. Uh, just about there. There we go. Very nice. Perfect. Well done. You've recorded your observations about the situation. Scientific value 24. And that's in high orbit. Now, not necessarily high orbit because we are actually on an escape trajectory, but high altitude, certainly. Which is basically the same thing when you're doing these kind of surveys. Why can't I get back on the command pod? What on earth is going on here? Okay. Let me get in. It's not the Ceptrons, is it? Okay. Bored. No, I'm not bored. I'm quite interested. But, you know, I'm just... Ah, forget it. Bad jokes. Not remotely funny. Okay, let's do a quick save. Although... No, I shouldn't really be quick loading at any point. I think I want to deal with the consequences if I do something stupid. So we'll see how it goes in that respect. Uh, get down. Ooh, we are going to be landing on the darkish side. Yeah, uh, well. Oh no, because we can circularize at 5 kilometers. Although 5 kilometers is risky, there are actual objects that are... No, let's just go for a straight landing. Go for a landing. Okay, burning retrograde. Very nice, look down, that's the moon. That's the moon, people. 
That is indeed the moon. Uh, we'll land and we'll activate the other... The other test, scientific goo thing. But for now, we just need to concentrate on getting down. So we're in an orbit now. Oh, there's an arch over there. Okay, we're going to that moon arch. Uh, if I just point our trajectory to go this way a little. And we can speed up time. Okay, that should have given us a bit of lateral velocity in terms of where we're going right now. It's going to be a waste of fuel getting over there, but it is it is an Easter egg. And you know I like that chocolate. Okay, let's just point ourselves so that we go in this direction. Okay, let's see where our trajectory is taking us. All the way over there. Okay, that should be about right. Nope, no, nope, it's not about right. We need to point more this way. Uh, no, still, still need more of that lateral velocity. Wasting precious fuel, perhaps. But I think it's worth it. I just don't want to have to land on a slope, because that will kill us. Or hitting this crater. Hitting this crater could do it as well. Burn. Okay, that seems to be a nice flat land down there. Is there any lights on this vehicle? Landing lights? Nope, just legs. Okay. Alright, we're going to go for a landing at this point, seeing as we are very close to the arch. So, let's cancel out our surface velocity. Whoa! Suddenly loud music. No thank you. <laughs> it just spurts into life without warning, without warning. And we do still have to fuel these tanks, so we're not quite as bad on fuel as it seems. Anyway, the sun is setting over the rim of this crater we have found to land ourselves in. And it's very hard to see where the ground is. Open up those landing legs. Double tap of G. Start building a bit more. Keeping ourselves over the retrograde thruster. Or retrograde vector, even. Good gracious me, I hope we're over the thruster. Otherwise we have some serious problems coming very soon. Okay, there's the surface. There's the surface. Oh, it is a slope. It is certainly a slope. Okay, contact light and cut engine. There we go. Excelente, look at that. Just as Kerbin, or just as the sun, Kerbol, sets over the rim of the crater. Man, what a beautiful sight to end with. So, in the next episode, we're going to be exploring and what's not, and probably going back to Kerbin. Thank you very much for watching this video. If you liked the video, then please do like the video. And uh, that's about it. I'll see you all next time.